Welcome to Enoch, a hellhole of madness and misery. If you don't want to end up as worm food, what worked for you in the old world won't work here. Mantra. Running and hiding are simply not viable options. Here, if you plan on surviving, you need to shift your mind into a higher gear. So let me walk you through the mantras of survival. Could I have your attention, please? First, cover is for cowards. Yeah, that's right. You can use cover. Nobody's stopping you. But you're a biological sledgehammer. Act like one. Chuck yourself into the fray. Two, your powers are on tap. You feel that tingling in your fingertips? Your powers are ready to be unleashed. Don't keep them waiting. Three, you've got to kill to heal. There's no use licking your wounds. Want your health back? Get out there and take it. Violence breeds vitality. And finally, a guiding philosophy to end. You have to think aggressive. Greetings, Outriders. Welcome back to our Spotlight series, where we deep dive on an individual aspect of the game. Today, we scope out our fourth and final class, the Technomancer. Enoch's anomaly storms might have fried tech for everyone else, but they unleashed abilities for the Technomancer to infuse powers into weaponry at their will. Thus, this class can exploit technology to the most brutal capacity. You can find time codes in the description if you want to skip to a specific topic, but we recommend sitting back and absorbing all the information on our machinery manipulating Technomancer. I have become terror. You can't fly. The unseen predator. You can't fly A rupture that obliterates without warning. Yeah. Who is this class for? Technomancers will appeal to a huge spread of players, simply thanks to their enormous versatility. However, the Technomancer's skill set will be utilized best by players who pay special attention to the flow of combat, beyond just raw damage. The status effects that Technomancers can inflict, as well as their boss skill interrupts and their unique ability to heal squad mates, mean that they are suited to fill in support roles. That's not to say Technomancers can't bring the pain. Packing an arsenal of weaponry and their summoning abilities, combined with a strong focus on sniper rifles, mean that they are the ideal class for any players intended to lone wolf their way through Enoch. Fundamentals Technomancers focus their powers around summoning and indirect sources of damage and effects. Spearheading this playstyle are three core tenets. Ordnance, Gadget, and Decay. Their unique melee power inflicts the Freeze status effect onto those hit by it. Freeze stops an enemy in its tracks, allowing you and your squad mates to focus fire on them. Healing. As we've mentioned in the other class spotlights, the main way to regain health is not via potions or spells, but by playing aggressively. In the Technomancer's case, they recover a portion of the damage they deal to enemies as health. They're a true vampire leech. However, the Technomancer's class passives also increase their damage outputs for both long-range weapons and anomaly power making sure that the Technomancer's healing passive stays on par with the other classes. Powers Each Outrider's class has eight powers in total. You'll start with a single power and will unlock more as you level up. Let's check out five of the abilities Technomancer has in their collection. Power 1, Tool of Destruction Question, do you prefer to riddle your enemies with bullets or turn them into a puff of red smoke. Well, why not both? With Tool of Destruction, you can change your preference whenever you want to. See, Tool of Destruction works a little differently to other skills in Outriders, in that it has alternate modes. Activating the skill via button press equips your Technomancer with a rocket launcher, but activating the skill by holding down the button will instead equip a minigun. 
However, the rocket launcher has the added bonus of interrupting enemies it damages. Let's watch that clip again. That orange bar means an enemy is charging up a skill. But the RPG interrupts them, preventing them from casting it. Which, particularly when going toe to toe with bosses and captains, can mean the difference between victory and a team wipeout. Power 2 Fixing Wave For those of you who prefer to play as support or healer to your mates, first of all, you're awesome, the world needs more of you. Secondly, Fixing Wave may just be your skill of choice. Fixing Wave is a skill design exclusive to the Technomancer and is the only power in Outriders that can restore health back to yourself, your constructs and your allies, regardless of distance. Power 3 – Pain Launcher This is one of a number of the Technomancer's construct skills and will create an automated defense device to damage enemies independently. Conjuring a missile launcher, this will engage in artillery-esque carpet bombing to not only damage enemies, but interrupt them as well. Bear in mind this gadget has a slight setup delay, so you'll need to tactically time it well. But if you pull it off, you can expect to create some awesome combinations with Pain Launcher. Power 4 – Blighted Turret More of a relentless, continuous damage type of person, Q Blighted Turret, a skill that places, yeah, you guessed it, an automated turret. But not only does this weaponry pour lead into your foes, it also inflicts the status condition Toxic. This deals damage over time and can be used to whittle down their health with hit and run tactics. You could use your turrets offensively through strategic placements to bolster your damage output, such as by flanking enemies. Alternatively, you could drop a turret while falling back to a better position, and it will keep your enemies occupied while you get ready to form your next plan of attack. Power 5 – Cold Snap Cold Snap is a large area of effect skill that will freeze all enemies in place. In an offensive scenario, you can use Cold Snap to wreak havoc with your other skills or regular weapons, especially if you manage to catch enemies when they're clumped together. Defensively, Cold Snap will help you prevent melee attackers from swarming you and getting too close. This is particularly useful for players who prefer sniper rifles and long-range combat. And bear in mind, the Technomancer will feature three more powers on top of these first five. Endless opportunities for computer-based carnage. Power Combos the wide range of powers in Outriders gives so much scope for mixing and matching different combinations. Let's check out one example. So, say you're a lone wolf technomancer being chased by a group of Pephoro. Using Cold Snap will freeze the enemies in place, buying you time to retreat and throw a blighted turret in their midst. While they're distracted and getting toxified, initiate Tool of Destruction to conjure a minigun and mow down any stragglers. Alter your Technomancer Each class has a tree of class point nodes that you can activate to alter the way your build and skills work. Class points are acquired by leveling up. You can't fill out the class tree entirely, but you will be able to respec your nodes to mix up your playstyle. And there are no costs or penalties. Respec your tree at any time. The three branches for the Technomancer are as follows. Pestilence, Tech Shaman and Demolisher with each branch providing both major and minor passives that affect your character's type of damage focus and survivability. The Pestilence branch flows best with your decay skills and weapons. It's all about increasing the damage you do with guns and provides great bonuses, particularly to sniper rifles or assault rifles. The Tech Shaman is more focused around indirect damage and will boost your turrets, freeze effects and healing. Notably, the overclocked passive node here will increase your damage significantly whenever you activate gadget skills, but it will also grant you a second chance. The Demolisher path will synergize with the greatest amount of your skills, and nodes here will mean that using your ordnance or gadget skills will impart a host of bonuses and buffs to you, as well as boost your toxic effect damage. 
Notably, this path also has a node, which will inflict toxic on all enemies that you freeze with your melee attack. As well as this, the equipment you use might also influence the way your skills work. The equipment passives might reduce the cooldown or duration of a skill, or they might alter it on a more fundamental level. And there we have it, an introduction to the Outriders tech whiz, but probably not the one you'd want to help set up Grandma's new phone. Hello, lovely people. Okay, so you just spent the last 40 hours finishing the epic story campaign, build a badass character, and you're pretty confident that you can handle everything this wicked world throws at you. But you're also aware that Outriders is a complete experience, straight out of the box, and doesn't have any life service elements. So, now what? Fear not, Outriders. We got you. Your job on Enoch is far from over. We don't want to go into any story spoilers, but for reasons that will become clear, mysterious points of interest have appeared across Enoch. New mysteries and stories are all waiting to be discovered. Precious resources, allowing for even more powerful gear. This is the place where advanced players really get to test their skills. It's a vicious, but highly addictive post-campaign mode we call Expeditions. Check it out, this is how it works. After finishing the main storyline, you'll find yourself in a new camp. Among some other additions, you will notice a new station, with a map showing many new areas for you to explore. Oh and yes, it's pretty important to point out that you won't play any recycled content from the main campaign. Expeditions are big, handcrafted new levels with their own mechanics, challenges and storyline. Before you start an expedition, you will notice the introduction of challenge tiers. It's pretty straightforward. The faster you are able to clear a mission, the richer the rewards. One important thing has changed though. You won't get any direct loot from your enemies. Instead, you'll receive all your rewards at the end of an expedition. If you manage to complete it. Don't worry though. We won't leave you completely empty-handed, even if you fail all your attempts. In this example, you can score a good chunk of epic and rare loot, plus three new tiers. That's because we picked the highest, at this moment, available tier. You can always go lower to one of the previous unlocked tiers, if you feel your strategy or build isn't quite ready yet. To be more precise, your newly earned tiers are needed for two things. First. Tears progression unlocks new locations for your team to discover. Unlocking all 15 of them will grant you access to the final expedition, the Eye of the Storm. Second, and similar to our world tier system, selected challenge tiers also determine the difficulty of a mission. Here's the kicker. When we release Outriders, your maximum character level is 30, but your weapons and gear can reach up to level 50 in expeditions. Choosing a challenge tier level will show you the expected enemy level, which is also the same level range of the loot you will receive at the end of a mission. So before you head into an expedition, make sure to adjust your strategy and equipment accordingly. There's no other way to go about this. Expeditions are tough. No wait, let me rephrase that. Expeditions are brutal, but for good reason. This content is intended for battle-hardened outriders, who really want to get creative with the nitty and gritty details of specialized character builds. Feeling like a well-tuned demigod? Then this is the place for you. But you might want to bring some demigod co-op friends along as well. You'll need them. No matter how strong and well-trained you think you are when you head into expeditions for the first time, you will need to become much more if you want to even reach the ultimate challenge. Stoked yet? Good. Before we dive more into expeditions though, we must first touch on another exciting subject that is heavily linked to this game mode. It's one of the most compelling and important core features of Outriders. Modding, crafting and everything in between. Upgrading and modifying your gear is an integral part of Outriders and gives you unparalleled freedom to strive for that perfect build. Dedicated players can experiment with a myriad of combinations to maximize and adapt their effectiveness for any given challenge. It's the foundation for countless hours of fun and in the case of expeditions, even mandatory for survival. Let's talk about mods first. Mods are passive skills that can significantly alter the way your weapons, armor or abilities work. 
For instance, they can add effects to your gunplay, irrespective of your class, sticking your enemy with a nasty status effect like Freeze, Bleed, Weaken, Toxic and many more. With rare and specialized mods equipped, you can even get a taste of the powers of a whole different class. For example, Golem's Limp is a legendary shotgun. It will grant its wield at a devastator's Golem skin for 3 seconds after every killing shot. In this case, helping out a pyromancer. Or maybe you get lucky and find this little gem, which takes a page from the Trickster's book about bending time and space. This mod will hit your opponent with a slow effect, like the Trickster's melee attack, but here we see a Technomancer making use of it. So broadly speaking, we're looking at two types of mods. General mods, as just described, can be applied to boost or alter how your weapons and armor work. But we also have skill mods, which are class specific. Those bad boys can amplify and change any of your 8 anomaly infused powers per class and can only be applied to armor. Like giving a trickster a second temporal slice. Or how about increasing the damage, radius and ammo of your Technomancer's rocket launcher? By equipping the Spike Forest mod, a Devastator is able to stick his worries on much more than just one skewer. All our mods are segmented into three tiers and you're able to collect them by dismantling the found gear that holds them. The rarity of a piece will determine what mod tier and amount of mods it might spawn with, except for our legendary gear, which has dedicated mods that can only be found on these specific items. This would be the mods in the tier 3 category, for instance. So far, so good. Now here's a really cool thing. Once collected, you can apply and mix match your mods however you want. Let's say you went through hell and back on a challenge, got lucky and walked away with the legendary assault rifle Absolute Zero. Yes, it absolutely wreaks havoc and freezing bullets are awesome. But you know what's even more awesome? Exactly, frozen enemies that get struck by lightning. So let's get to it. Luckily I found a legendary weapon called Thunderbird earlier in the game. And with my much higher level now, I decided to dismantle it and go for the mods. Quick piece of intel though. If a weapon already has two mods slotted, you can only change one of those two mods. Now let's select the ultimate Storm Whip mod, the one we scored earlier from the Thunderbird, and the slot on the weapon with the mod we want to replace. Now all we have to do in order to get this new dream weapon build is to spend a little of our resources. In this case, 396 iron. Beautiful. And this is just one little example how you can alter and upgrade every single piece of gear in Outriders. So what else can we do in this crafting table? Improve rarity lets us improve the primary parameters of every item that isn't epic or legendary. That's firepower for weapons and armor for your wearables. By the way, hovering over the crafting options will reveal a color code explaining what rarity is needed for each craft. Here we look at unusual, rare, epic and legendary. Next up, swap variant. Here you can alter how your weapon fires and behaves in the field. Each weapon offers different variants, depending on the type of weapon. You can unlock even more variants as your character level progresses. And last but not least, level up. Which is pretty much as straightforward as it sounds. Similar to improve rarity, raising a level of your equipment will boost firepower or armor. A thing is pretty obvious now. If you're really into tinkering with your equipment, Outriders will give you a lot of creative freedom to do just that. With about 350 individual mods across weapons, armor and skills, players have a lot of possibilities to experiment and home in on that perfect build. Also keep in mind, everything we just saw in the crafting department is directly linked to this. Fine-tuning your skills and equipment in conjunction with the skill tree. A skill tree that you can respec at any time without any cost. And this is where things really get interesting. Makes you wonder how deep this rabbit hole goes, doesn't it? Expeditions will challenge you and your team not only on a skill level, but also on how well your builds are tuned and in sync with another. That's why going deep into customization aspects of Outriders is not only super fun, but also vastly improves your lifespan on Enoch in general. Tune and optimize your skill tree for the challenge ahead and find effective ways to complement the available powers from your Outrider squad mates. Especially when you want to take on higher world tiers in a story campaign, for instance. Okay, we covered crafting and upgrading your gear. Let's talk a little bit more about expeditions. As I said in the beginning, all of our expeditions are big, bespoke new levels in the game. And we have 14 of them ready for you to conquer when we ship on February 2nd, 2021. Of course, we want to leave the excitement and fun of exploring these new areas for you. 
But hey, let's take a quick peek, shall we? I've sensed a deep, humming noise reverberating from deep within the forest. It comes and goes, but during our journey it has grown louder. And next to this gate, it is more piercing than ever. Outrider, I need to know the cause of this. Tiago was right about that hum. My teeth are chattering from the vibration. Strange structure. Some kind of switch over there. obelisk mechanism in the middle could be the way forward I can't wait for you and your friends to face Enoch's ultimate challenges. I hope you liked what you saw and as always, stay safe out there and take care of each other. Sven out. Whatever we were before, we're something new now. We were given a second life. We can't waste it.
terror. You can't fly The unseen predator. You can't fly A rupture that obliterates without warning. Alone, the hordes of Enoch will fall before me. But together, this entire planet will fear us. The anomaly alters us each in our own ways, yet we are drawn down the same road into the dark heart of creation. Cause I feel the way you feel. Yeah, I can't find the source, whatever it holds, whatever it takes. Hey, hello everyone! This is Sven with a very special treat. It's time to feast your eyes on some brand new co-op action, where I play as Kayla to show you the final class in action. The class that you have all been waiting for, the Tactomancer. An advanced heart-hitting tactical specialist, able to spawn a wide range of deadly contraptions. We have a great fire team on the field today, with Lucy taking helm of the Devastator and Robbie is in command of a Pyromancer. So sit back and enjoy a few minutes of intense co-op gameplay. And we talk again in a bit.
Secure that hilltop! Don't give them time to breathe! And there you have it. The Technomancer has arrived, and the fourth class is finally revealed. For this specific loadout, we showed you three of the Technomancer's powers. A sticky proximity mine slash grenade hybrid, a conjured RPG, and a mighty pain launcher, which fires a widespread rocket barrage that rains death on your enemies. It should already give you a good idea about the versatility of this class, especially in combination with your Devastator, Pyromancer and Trickster co-op partners allowing many new and exciting possibilities when it comes to refining how the many different powers in your fire team complement each other. And speaking about our friend Devastator, Lucy just showed a lot of cool new stuff you can do with this class. And you can dive even more into the nitty gritty details of the Devastator in this month's Spotlight, so be sure to check that out. We hope you enjoyed this exciting look into Outrider's brutal and thrilling co-op possibilities. And I also hope you are all already building out your dream team in your heads. And as always, stay safe out there, people. And I see you in the next Outriders broadcast. Greetings Outriders! Welcome back to our Spotlight series, videos that explore specific features of the game. Today, we are delving into the third class, the ground-shaking, earthquaking Devastator. There are time codes in the description if you'd like to skip through sections, but if knowing everything there is to know is more your style, keep on watching. As Devastators, we shatter the Earth around us, a brute force powered by the planet itself. Who is this class for? At first glance, you may think that Devastators are your typical, run-of-the-mill tank class. But once you get to know these not-so-friendly giants, you'll soon realize that they can match the other classes regarding sheer damage and devastation. An important thing to note is that the Devastator can be a real linchpin in determining the flow of battle. With a number of interrupt skills, an accomplished Devastator can effectively shut bosses down. If you love slugging it out with the enemy toe-to-toe, -to -toe, laughing at their pitiful attempts to bring you down, well, the Devastator is your kind of class. Fundamentals 
The Devastator is focused around gravitational and Earth-based powers and effects, centered around three core tenets, kinetic, protection, and seismic. Its melee type is slightly different from the other classes as it inflicts the bleeding status effect onto enemies hit by it. Bleeding deals damage over time to afflicted enemies. Healing. Devastators recover health when enemies perish around you in close range. Now, we know what you're thinking. Sounds similar to the trickster, right? Well, there are actually some key differences between these close quarters killing machines. At base level, the difference is that tricksters get shields for each close range kill, and devastators just have more HP and armor as standard. But they start to differentiate the more upgrades you get. When upgraded, Devastators can achieve bonuses to armor and health by choosing specific class tree paths and nodes. For example, stealing enemy armor for each enemy slain in close range. An upgraded Devastator will most likely have the most armor and health buffs out of all of the classes. These mechanics mean that if you want to be an unstoppable juggernaut as a Devastator, you will need to keep chasing into the heart of combat, making sure you're always in the thick of it if you want to maintain your health. Powers Each class has eight powers in total. You'll start with a single power and unlock more as you level up. In this video, we're showing you four of the Devastator's abilities and we'll showcase the other half in the future. Power 1 – Gravity Leap Upon using Gravity Leap, you will jump into the air and hover there for a few seconds. Activating the power once more whilst targeting an enemy, which will be highlighted in yellow, will cause you to slam down on them, dealing area damage to all nearby enemies. This is an excellent option for quickly launching yourself into the thick of the fight, or maybe exiting combat to isolated, far away enemies. Remember that Devastators heal when enemies close to them die, so this skill is key to ensuring you'll always be close enough to enemies that are about to perish. This is also an interrupt skill. That means that you can use it to prevent bosses from channeling their own skills. Just make sure that you don't have it on cooldown at those key moments. Power 2 – Reflect Bullets Using Reflect Bullets will activate a shield directly in front of you. While the shield is up, any bullets fired at you will get caught in the shield, preventing all damage. This makes it a great skill to cover your allies while they get into position, or during a team charge at the enemy. However, it isn't just a defensive skill. When the skill duration ends, or when you activate the power again, all of the caught bullets will be sent flying back at nearby enemies. This means that you'll want to chase down the biggest outpourings of lead, catch them, and then throw them right back in the enemy's face. Power 3 – Impale This is the Outriders team's personal favorite Devastator attack. Want to know why? That's why. When using Impale, you select an enemy to interrupt them. This is highly effective when dealing with bosses and their pesky skills, but is also a very useful ability for dealing with mobs too. If the damage dealt by Impale is lethal, the enemy will be speared by a stone spike, granting your squad an armor bonus and health regen for 9 seconds. Impale also has 7 potential modifiers that could be applied to it through gear. For example, the mod Spike Forest, which can be found on a legendary gear set, means that Impale can strike one additional target. Safety in numbers? <laughs> I don't think so. Power 4 – Endless Mass Endless Mass releases a spinning obelisk, which sucks all nearby enemies towards its gravitational center. Think of it as your own personal black hole. Endless Mass is a hugely versatile skill and will likely form at least part of your strategy when playing with friends. The ability to draw large numbers of enemies into a tightly packed clump means that most other targeted skills, from both Devastators and other classes, can be used to gargantuan effect. As mentioned, these are only half of the Devastator's skills. Subscribe to keep in the loop about the other four. Power Combos As Devastators feed off close-range kills, they need to lock distances between enemies down very quickly. 
Combining Endless Mass with Gravity Leap will mean that a Devastator can instantly be amongst the enemy, causing havoc, dishing out damage. Reflect Bullets can then be used to minimize damage against you whilst you're the center of attention, before you turn the tables on the enemy. Eat lead, baby! Alter your Devastator. Each class has a tree of class point nodes that you can activate to alter the way your builds and skills work. Class points are acquired by leveling up. You won't be able to fill out the class tree, but you will be able to respec your nodes to switch up your gameplay as you go. The three branches for the Devastator are Vanquisher, Warden, and Seismic Shifter with each branch providing both major and minor passives that affect your character's type of damage focus and survivability. The Vanquisher branch is all about grappling up close and personal with the enemy, and thus provides bonuses for weapons like shotguns or assault rifles. The Warden branch will truly move mountains and is the ultimate tank, with very high bonuses to health, armor, and resistances. The Seismic Shifter branch is most useful at mid-range combat and focuses on anomaly damage for seismic skills such as Impale. This branch also combines very well with the bleeding status effect that Devastators can inflict. Damage over time fans, you're gonna love this one. Additionally, the equipment you use may impact the way your skills work too. The equipment passives might reduce the cooldown or duration of the skill, or they might alter it on a more fundamental level. But we don't want to spoil the fun too much today, so we will showcase these in another video. So that's our Devastator introduced. No need to shake hands. I mean, they'd probably crush your palm into dust if you did. As the last remnants of humanity destroy themselves, the signal is still out there. And with it lies the key to our salvation. We journey from the ruins of our old world and into what lies beyond. The things I've seen, even I do not believe them. Where I am taking these two, there's no coming back. You think you're dreaming? What the... This is real. It's the end of the goddamn world out there. All this persistence, this world is crashing down. And what will be left? Beyond here, there's only death. I'm finding that signal. Outriders is massive, both in terms of game length and the numbers of hours you'll be able to pour into it, and the physical distance you'll traverse over the course of the story. So today we're excited to show you more of the journey and structure of Outriders. How you move about the game and how the various features, systems and story all come together. In last month's broadcast, we explored the first city, the area of Enoch first settled by the refugees of Earth. Everything from the section of the game unfolded here, in this area of the map. The first city sits within a larger area of colonized Enoch, which you can see here. Here, humans have made a life, as best as they can, and built cities, strongholds, factories and mines as they try to survive. 
This is where the Outriders are first reawoken from cryosleep and where your first hours in the game are spent. Humanity has always struggled to leave this place. With the raging anomaly storms and monsters preventing further colonization of the planet, pushing society back to the Dark Ages. As you will see though, there's a whole lot more to Enoch. As an outrider, you're one of the few powerful enough to leave humanity's broken settlements and journey out across this hostile planet. But what does it mean in actuality? Outriders takes advantage of a hub and spoke structure, connecting busy, settled areas, the hubs, with combat arenas and free roam areas, the spokes. The main story missions push you through the game and a large number of side quests and additional content can be discovered on or off the beaten path. As side quests scale to your level, so do the rewards. It means even early side quests can be meaningful played late in the game. And it's worth saying side quests aren't fluffy objectives that take place in the same play spaces you've experienced in the main game. They're new, bespoke areas of Enoch that you could miss entirely and they often reveal more secrets about the world and lore. Let's travel quickly to Eagle Peaks, the snow-capped mountains that encase the war zone, to take on a side quest there. Is this your whole company? There used to be more of us. When something happens to the men up in these hills. We hear voices. Some leave and don't come back. Same for anyone who goes looking for them. But... Maybe an altar could have more luck in finding them. Could you lend a hand? All right, let's play detective. If I was a missing soldier wandering off into the night hearing voices, where would I go? Come on! Oh, come on! Don't do this! I, I just came looking for my friend! He belongs here now! We all do! Today, the storm welcomes an apostate into its loving embrace! So it seems the last remaining survivor of our missing soldiers was just sacrificed to the anomaly? We need to have some words with this deadly cult and its leader. ECA! We're only giving you a small taste of this little side adventure. It takes a fair bit longer to make our way into the inner chambers here. And as always, we like to keep some surprises for you. But it's time now for an epic showdown with the altered cultist leader. seems to make people flip their fucking lids. Yeah, nice. By completing the side quest, we can now choose a sweet piece of new gear as a reward. With that sorted, let's talk a little bit more about hops. In hops, your weapons are holstered for a time, and you can soak in a bit of life on Enoch. Here you can visit vendors to sell scrap and purchase gear, frequent bars to gather gossip and bounties, call it the liver spinner, and pick up side quests from one of Enoch's many eccentric denizens. What exactly is your business? Certain mercenary services. It's hard to show this without spoilers, but as you progress through the game, the world state and NPC dialogue is affected by pivotal moments from the story and new side quests unlock, some of which are hidden in earlier hubs and play spaces. Further rewarding exploration. 
Combat feats also come with achievements. Complete a collector's quest like Bounty or Monster Hunt, and NPCs will recognize and reward your triumphs. In bringing to life a new sci-fi universe, we are adamant that these settled areas feel dynamic and alive. Oh, and if Monster Hunts pique your interest, stay tuned for a future broadcast to learn more about them. Well, this should be interesting. Crucially, hubs also allow you to check in on your Outriders truck and crew, which will grow as you progress throughout the game. We're going to talk more about the Outriders truck in the future, but its primary function is to transport you through the world, bringing many of the features of a town with it. All the functionality you'd expect from a hub hits the road with you. Your weapon vendor, your crafting, your crew. The truck is a moving RPG village. Now you don't operate the truck yourself. That job falls to your driver, Jakob, who we will talk more about later. But the customization options are vast, so you can personalize your ride along your journey. Okay, let's pack up and hit the road now. I need to head to the forest to continue my journey. Let's take a quick moment to introduce the crew. Your ride or die is accompanying you on your quest to discover the source of the signal. Here we can see Jakob, who drives the truck and can handle any customization of the vehicle. Jakob was with your Outrider during the first arrival on Enoch, 30 years prior. A bright-eyed youth with an exciting life ahead of him on a new planet. Time has not been kind to poor Jakob. Here's Sahidi, who we met in the last broadcast. One of the few people on Enoch with a grasp on science and how to get mankind out of the pickle they happen to find themselves in. You can talk to Sahidi for weapon mods and crafting. We'll be talking more about this topic in the next broadcast. Finally, at least for the moment, there's Bailey, who has been appointed to your team by Corrigan, the Grand Marshal of Trenchtown, who's allowed you to travel through the various sectors of the settlement. Let's go. Bailey hates the arrangement as much as you do, but is forced to join the journey. In camps like this, Bailey also acts as a gear vendor, with a host of unique weapons and armor you can trade for scrap. Other notable features of a given camp? Your stash where you can store and withdraw equipment that you might not be able to hold on your person. The stash also allows you to move gear freely between your roster of player-built characters. Next to the hammer gear, you'll always be able to change and customize the look of your Outrider. And of course the matchmaking terminal, which is hopefully self-explanatory. Before I'm leaving you for this month's broadcast, I'm going to take you beyond the safe confines of the forest enclave. It's a beautiful night. So let's head out there and explore. Hey, you remember my tunes I used to play? Like it was yesterday. I can still remember some of them. <clears throat> Please stop, Jakob. Please, I'm, I'm, I'm serious. Yeah, Jakob, I'm disconnecting. Greetings Outriders! Welcome to our Spotlight series, a collection of videos that delve deeper into specific aspects of the game. Today we're taking a look at our next class. Crank up the heat because it's the Pyromancer. As always, we've got time codes in the description if you prefer to skip to a section, but if you want to absorb everything there is to know about our fiery friend, keep on watching. As pyromancers, we manipulate explosive volcanic energy and devastating walls of flames. Who is this class for? Players who like to take on hordes of enemies at once. Also, pyromaniacs. Nah, just, just kidding. Don't actually set things on fire. Unless you're in the game, then set everything on fire. Pyromancers tend to fight at mid-range. They don't have the movement abilities needed to get in and out of combat quickly, like their tricks the brethren. But many of their abilities are area of effect based, meaning you'll want a decent amount of space to line them up, then light them up. Fundamentals. The Pyromancer has three core fundamentals that underlies each of their powers. These are explosive, 
immobilize and ignite. The Pyromancer is focused around thermal and fire-based powers and effects, which you can even see in the class's melee attacks. Your standard melee attack will deal fire damage to anyone it hits, while also inflicting extra effects as well. It is so much more than a skill just to use in a raw panic. Healing. Even the best combatants get injured from time to time, so knowing how to utilize your unique pyromancer skills is essential to surviving. As with all of the classes, there are no quick fixes to retaining health. You need to play aggressively to restore HP. In the pyromancer's case, they can be healed if an enemy dies while marked by their skills. Any pyromancer skill that damages an enemy will mark them for a set time. This means that pyromancers can get maximum healing from affecting the greatest amount of enemies possible, and then also ensuring that those same enemies meet a swift death. Powers Each class has eight powers in total, starting with a single power and unlocking more as you level up. Many of the pyromancers' powers inflict a status effect called burning. This sets enemies on fire and provides a nice bit of damage over time. However, inflicting burning also momentarily stuns enemies and can be used as an interrupt. But that's enough general power information. Let's check out four of the Pyromancer's abilities now. Power 1. Thermal Bomb Thermal Bomb will set an enemy ablaze and deal additional damage to them over time. If an enemy dies while under the effects of Thermal Bomb, they'll rise into the air and explode in a gory mess, dealing damage to a large radius. Combine this power with a mob of grouped enemies, and the resulting explosion may well wipe the rest of them out too. You don't have to be the one to land the killing blow either. You can tag an enemy and have a fellow Outrider kill them, which will still trigger the Thermal Bomb going off. Teamwork. Power 2. Ash Blast. Using this skill will apply the status effect Ash to all enemies in a large radius. Ash prevents affected targets from doing anything at all for a few seconds, immobilizing them in a suffocating cloud of dust. A great crowd control ability, Ash Blast can cause large numbers of enemies to briefly freeze in place. This can be combined really well with other powers to hit a maximum number of enemies. And there are scenarios to use Ash Blast both offensively and defensively. Offensive. Use Ash Blast to prevent enemies from escaping any area of effect abilities you or your teammates might be casting. Alternatively, Ash Blast can help you line enemies up for successful headshots, causing maximum damage. Defensive. Ash Blast can also be used to buy you vital breathing room. Ironic, seeing as your foes will be choking on Ash. If you're being overwhelmed, use it to freeze enemies in their tracks and fall back to a more manageable distance. Power 3. Heatwave. This is one of the earliest powers you unlock. As the Pyromancer is a medium range class, you'll want to maintain a little bit of distance between yourself and enemies, and Heatwave is perfect for this. If enemies, particularly melee attackers, try to rush you, Heatwave will provide you with the space you need to be most effective at scolding them into crispy giblets. Heatwave's secondary effect shouldn't be forgotten either. The burn status effect will deal damage over time to all affected enemies, which may well help give you a nice burst of healing if they feel the burn a little bit too literally. Power 4. Overheat. Overheat may only deal a small amount of damage to enemies within a large radius, but it does deal extra damage to enemies that are currently burning, making it a great follow-up skill. Similarly to Heatwave, Overheat is an excellent way of marking numerous foes and strategically setting yourself up for a big burst of healing. It's one of those skills that just gets on with everyone, you know? It synergizes really well with a number of other powers to double down on damage dealt. The definition of supportive. We all need an Overheat in our life. 
as we mentioned before, our Pyro Pal will feature a further four powers on top of those that we've shown today. But we will talk about these later down the line. Power Combos Using powers by themselves is all well and good, but utilizing them in combinations is where Outriders truly shines. Heatwave's ability to hit several enemies at once with burning means that overheat can inflict maximum damage. Thermal Bomb, on the other hand, may only inflict burning onto a single enemy at a time, but the status effect still means that overheat can be triggered to cause extra damage and ensure the Thermal Bomb carrier dies and triggers the explosion. As mentioned, the Pyromancer is ideally a mid-range fighter who likes to keep enemies at arm's length, and this combo will show you how to do just that. While in battle, Heatwave neutralizes enemies that get too close. Following Heatwave up with Ash Blast will ensure that those enemies remain where they are. Then place a Thermal Bomb amongst the mob and focus all fire on that enemy. If you can kill them before the Ash Blast effect wears off, you can wreak havoc with the Thermal Bomb explosion and benefit from a burst of healing at the same time. And bear in mind, these are only simple examples of how powers could be chained. You'll no doubt find your own most effective ways of playing Outriders in your own style. Alter your Pyromancer. Each class has a tree of class point nodes that you can activate to alter the way your build and skills work. Class points are acquired by leveling up. You won't be able to fill out the entire class tree, but you will be able to respec your nodes to change the way you play. The three branches for the Pyromancer are Ashbreaker, Firestorm, and Tempest, with each branch providing both major and minor passives that affect your character's type of damage focus and survivability. The Ashbreaker branch will generally provide bonuses when dealing damage against marked enemies, while also providing a boost in anomaly power. The Firestorm branch is a path focused on maximizing the damage output of skills. This path will allow you to increase your anomaly power, your burning damage, and the skill damage you do on marked enemies. The Tempest branch, on the other hand, helps you fill more of a tank role. The path focuses on maximizing your health bonus and reducing the damage you take from certain sources. One of the more unique passive bonuses you can activate on this path is an automatic revival upon death. That's pretty handy. Additionally, the equipment you use may impact the way your skills work. The gear you equip might reduce the cooldown or duration of a skill, or they may alter it on a more fundamental level. But fear not, we will showcase these bad boys in a future video. And with that, the introduction to our Pyromancer is coming to a close. Keep an eye out on our YouTube channel for future gameplay videos and other spotlights coming soon. Greetings, Outriders. Welcome to the Outriders Spotlight, a collection of videos where you can find out much more about individual topics in the world of Outriders. This is your one-stop shop, the place to be, where you'll have explanations straight from the team behind the game. This is just the start. We'll have plenty of deep dives coming in the future to prepare you for landing on Enoch. So subscribe to our YouTube channel and you'll never miss a beat. We're kicking things off with one of the four classes you'll be playing as, the Trickster. If there's something you want to know in particular, we've broken the video down into sections. Use the timecodes in the description below this video or just skip along to the part you want to see. Otherwise, sit back and learn everything you need to know about being Assassin class. As Tricksters, we manipulate the fabric of time and space to take our enemies by surprise. Who is this class for? Players who like to get in and out quick, leaving devastation in your wake. Tricksters are for you. However, because of the way skills and your passives can be customized, certain builds of the Trickster could be used as a tank roll for the rest of your group. The choice is yours. Fundamentals. The Trickster is focused around space and time powers and effects. You can see this in the class's melee attack, which stuns and slows enemies hit by it. Oh, and speaking of melee, it isn't one size fits all. 
Not only do the different classes have melee abilities enhanced by their own unique powers, but there are two variations as well. You've got your standard melee when standing still, or your upgraded attack when you activate melee while sprinting. Healing Within the brutal and violent world of Outriders, there'll come times where you'll be hurt and need to be healed. The key thing to note here is that there aren't any quick fix health potions or magic spells, but playing offensively restores HP instead. This affects your playstyle in that it invites you to play more aggressively, rather than run and duck for cover when your health is low. Your best chance at survival may actually be to teleport to where the fighting is thickest. Taking your enemies down is the key to keeping you alive. Unique to the Trickster, they get healed when killing enemies in close range, and they also get shields, while other classes have their own healing mechanics. Let's explore 4 out of 8 total powers the Trickster has at their fingertips. Each class has 8 powers in total. You'll start off with a single power and unlock more as you level up. The Trickster will feature an additional 4 powers on top of those that we're talking about today, but we'll showcase these later on. Power 1, Temporal Slice. This will be the very first power you unlock as a Trickster, and it's the class's bread and butter. All enemies hit by the Slash will be temporarily paralyzed, which is displayed by their skeletons becoming visible and their movement greatly slowing down. Slowing enemies down is a key trickster skill, as it allows you and your squad mates to pour lead into any enemies caught in the effect. The Temporal Slice is especially effective in combination with other skills that cluster enemies close together. The Slice will affect all enemies and allow for maximum damage and kills, which can easily heal a nearly dead trickster back to full health thanks to the mechanics. Power 2, Borrowed Time. Upon use of this skill, you will instantly gain a percentage of your maximum health as a shield that absorbs damage before your health is affected. Additionally, using the power will create a time clone of yourself in the location that the power was used. You can thereafter freely move about and engage the enemy, or set up a trap. But using the Borrowed Time again, when your time clone is still active, will teleport you back to the time clone's location. Should you be going into a high-risk combat situation, you may want to use this skill as your quick escape from danger. Just when you're about to die, you can teleport to safety. Power 3, Slow Trap. This power will create a dome around you that slows down enemies and enemy projectiles while still allowing yourself and your allies to move at normal speed. Think of it as your own personal bullet time bubble. This is a skill that can be used both offensively and defensively. Defensive. Activate the dome in the middle of a firefight, and you and your fellow Outriders will be able to sidestep any incoming projectiles or melee attackers. You can also use the slow trap to help in resurrecting a fellow teammate if they've been downed in a particular hotspot. Enoch is also home to many different kinds of enemies, and you may occasionally find yourself swarmed by melee attackers or monsters. Activating slow trap in these circumstances can be an excellent way to trap numerous enemies. Move into a cluster of enemies and activate the dome to make them all move in slow motion. Then, go to town. Power 4, Hunt the Prey. When activated, this skill will allow you to highlight any visible enemy. Using the skill once more will teleport you directly behind them and you will additionally gain a percentage of your maximum health as a shield, whilst also slowing the enemy it's used on. You can instantly warp across the battlefield to either get yourself into or out of trouble. This skill could even be your opening gambit when first entering a combat encounter. You can walk right into the thick of the enemies and lay waste around you. Alternatively, you can also use it to teleport to single enemies who are separate from the main body of attackers. This should buy you some time and allow you to pick enemies off one by one. As with all classes in Outriders, powers can be hot swapped as long as they're not on cooldown. You could even change them while in combat, though we'd recommend taking cover to do so, or you may find yourself dead. Powers in Outriders are designed to have relatively short cooldowns. There's essentially no limit to how much you can use them to get the most out of combat. So far, we've mainly looked at four powers in isolation. 
but Outriders truly comes together when you and your squad mates are in the thick of battle, timing your powers perfectly to inflict maximum carnage. Hunt the Prey can be especially effective when combined with Borrowed Time. Teleport into the thick of it using Hunt the Prey, then inflict maximum damage using Temporal Slice or Slow Trap. If running into danger, Borrowed Time can be your ripcord to get you out of it again, while Hunt the Prey is on cooldown. This is only a very simple example of how powers could be chained. You'll no doubt find your own most effective ways of playing Outriders your way. Alter your Trickster Each class has a tree of class point nodes that you can activate to alter the way your build and skills work. Class points are acquired by leveling up. You won't be able to fill out the entire class tree, but you will be able to respec your nodes to change the way you play. The three branches for the Trickster link into the class's fundamentals – movement, damage, and disruption – with each branch providing both major and minor passives. In the Trickster's case, these three branches are called Master of Space, Harbinger, and Assassin. There are elements of the fundamentals in all branches. They're intertwined, and you can cross-link them to your personal needs and wishes. The Master of Space branch will generally provide bonuses while the player is moving, and improves your close combat effectiveness. No tier will enhance your damage with shotguns and SMGs when you use movement-based skills. The Harbinger is the tank path of the Trickster. This path focuses on providing damage mitigation as well as shield bonuses to provide maximum survivability. And the Assassin branch focuses on skill damage output. Several nodes here provide bonuses when you use damage and movement skills, and the path provides additional anomaly power and skill leech options. Additionally, the equipment you use may impact the way your skills work. An equipment's passives might reduce the cooldown or duration of a skill, or they might alter it on a more vital level. But we'll showcase these in the future. Outriders has a flexible difficulty system called World Tears that allows you to fine-tune your difficulty setting at your leisure. This means that the game will organically find the right challenging difficulty for you. Even if you're a skilled and maxed out player absolutely chewing through the battlefield with fully optimised gear. The idea behind World Tears is that you can make Outriders either a just here for the story game or a true Hell on Enoch experience. It is totally up to you. Generally speaking, higher world tiers are more difficult as they increase enemy stats such as damage, armor, health, and enemy level. However, you will also gain more rewards, get better loot drops, and unlock more accolades. You'll start on world tier 1 and scale up as you play the game, depending on your performance. When you eventually get up to the higher world tiers, you will get to a point where you will need to optimize your gear and build accordingly in order to continue to progress. Let's pull up the world tier menu here and have a closer look. As you can see, world tiers can be manually adjusted on the fly, depending on how you're currently doing. You'll gain experience in combat towards unlocking the next world tier, should you be playing on the highest world tier possible for your character. This experience is separate from the character level, but is accumulated much in the same way. Experience from quests doesn't contribute to world tier experience, but quest combat does. Where is he? Inside the bunker of the hill. Here's the kicker though. Whenever you die, you will lose a percentage of world tier advancement. This prevents you from accidentally stepping up to even more difficult world tiers should you be struggling on the current one. You really need to earn your spurs here. Each newly unlocked world tier will also reward you with either a resource or a new rare, epic or legendary weapon, and in some cases, both. Higher world tiers will enable loot to drop that is actually of a higher level than the player themselves. This starts at world tier 4 and scales till world tier 15. At the same time, playing on these same world tiers will allow the player to wear gear that is higher than their level while they are in that world tier. One final note on difficulty. The difficulty of the game and enemies will also be impacted by the amount of players in the game. This will ensure that the game remains challenging while playing in groups with friends, but it isn't punishing to the point of not being fun when playing solo. We know that screen real estate is important to shooter fans. 
There is a lot of information that needs to be delivered, and players have various preferences in terms of the hierarchy of information. We're conscious that different people want different things from an RPG shooter. Some people like seeing everything, from damage, numbers, quest trackers to life bars and more. While others might want a more pure shooter experience. Everyone falls in different places on that spectrum. So we made sure to include options to customize your UI experience however you like.
In this episode's playthrough, we're taking you to the first city. It's the first human colony in Enoch, established by the ECA shortly after their arrival. The huge structure in the background is actually one of the engines of the SM Floris, the massive spaceship you and the rest of humanity used to travel from Earth to Enoch. It was brought down to the surface of the planet to serve as a temporary power source for the colony. But when the first big anomaly storm hit the first city, the engine was damaged and at a risk of a meltdown. And after a few months of initial panic and chaos, that's exactly what happened. The engine's nuclear reactor exploded, blanketing many areas with heavy radiation. With the city having lost its main source of energy, and most of the water and food becoming unsafe to consume, many perished in the aftermath. After the anomaly storms, riots and decades of war, both inner city and the slums surrounding it have long been abandoned by the authority and most of its inhabitants. This is hostile territory now, and many of them roam around trying to scavenge for scraps while navigating through the pockets of radiation in monster nests. Our mission here is to find and obtain an old truck, which belongs to an important ECA scientist called Sahidi. Sahidi claims something on this truck holds invaluable information about the anomaly and the mysterious signal. For now, we only faced humanoid enemies on our path. But the first city will introduce us to a new threat, the Perforo. Like most of the monstrous creatures seen on Enoch, the Perforo was a pre-existing species that rapidly evolved by the corruption of the anomaly. And it was one of the first hostile creatures that attacked the colony in its early years. One thing is certain though, their strength is in numbers. Even a battle-hardened outrider is often left with only one option when facing a swarm. Run. Let's join our pyromancer Nova and see what she's up to on her mission to find Sahidi's truck. Yeah, like I said, sometimes you just need to run. But not for long. Let's take a quick moment to talk about a pretty important feature, UI. We know that screen real estate is important to shoot events. There is a lot of information that needs to be delivered and players have various preferences in terms of the hierarchy of information. We're conscious that different people want different things from an RPG shooter. Some people like seeing everything from damage, numbers, quest trackers to life bars and more while others might want a more pure shooter experience. Everyone falls in different places on that spectrum. So we made sure to include options to customize your UI experience however you like. Let's see if I can clear up my screen a little. I really want to take in the view today, so I'm changing my HUD to a more minimal shooter style UI. Let's return to our Pyromancer Nova now. She made good progress through the ruins of First City and is now heading towards a giant drawbridge. By the way, Perforo will come in different shapes and sizes.
Sven. Let's take a moment to talk about dynamic difficulty settings in Outriders. Outriders has a flexible difficulty system called World Tears that allows you to fine-tune your difficulty setting at your leisure. This means that the game will organically find the right challenging difficulty for you. Even if you're a skilled and maxed out player absolutely chewing through the battlefield with fully optimized gear. The idea behind World Tears is that you can make Outriders either a just here for the story game or a true hell on Enoch experience. It is totally up to you. Generally speaking, higher world tiers are more difficult as they increase enemy stats such as damage, armor, health, and enemy level. However, you will also gain more rewards, get better loot drops, and unlock more accolades. You'll start on world tier 1 and scale up as you play the game, depending on your performance. When you eventually get up to the higher world tiers, you will get to a point where you will need to optimize your gear and build accordingly in order to continue to progress. Let's pull up the world tier menu here and have a closer look. As you can see, world tiers can be manually adjusted on the fly, depending on how you're currently doing. You'll gain experience in combat towards unlocking the next world tier, should you be playing on the highest world tier possible for your character. This experience is separate from the character level, but is accumulated much in the same way. Experience from quests doesn't contribute to world tier experience, but quest combat does. Where is he? Inside the bunker up the hill. Here's the kicker though. Whenever you die, you will lose a percentage of world tier advancement. This prevents you from accidentally stepping up to even more difficult world tiers, should you be struggling on the current one. You really need to earn your spurs here. Each newly unlocked world tier will also reward you with either a resource or a new rare, epic or legendary weapon, and in some cases, both. Higher world tiers will enable loot to drop that is actually of a higher level than the player themselves. This starts at world tier 4 and scales till world tier 15. At the same time, playing on these same world tiers will allow the player to wear gear that is higher than their level while they are in that world tier. One final note on difficulty. The difficulty of the game and enemies will also be impacted by the amount of players in the game. This will ensure that the game remains challenging while playing in groups with friends, but it isn't punishing to the point of not being fun when playing solo. For now, things were a little on the easy side for us back there, so let's crank things up a gear. Thanks, Lucy. Nova likes her enemies tough, so yeah, bring it on. One of the things we've been super mindful of during development is how all that background and exposition is delivered. We know that one of the pains of this genre is having to work to consume story. We don't want our lore to be a chore or an obstacle to immersion. So we've ensured that everything is on the disc and in the game itself. While exploration and talking to NPCs will deliver additional context and background, Bios, backstories and lore are unlocked as you play and can then be pulled from the menu at any time. So, say for example you want to learn about the first city and the initial colonization of Enoch, you can check it out right here. The next section will be pretty tough, so ask my friend and community manager Robbie to tag along for a little co-op action. He's sporting a badass trickster in a complete legendary gear set. Now let's do some real damage. We have a truck to find. In the interest of time and to keep some surprises for you, we're going to skip ahead a little now. Let's join the final minutes of the brutal finale against the portal-wielding captain. And there we have it, the 
captain left us a nice piece of armor. And yeah, a couple of limbs too. We hope you enjoyed our little trip to First City, and I see you in the next episode. Stay safe out there. So, paint the scene for me. Where are we right here? This is the war zone. When your outrider first wakes up from cryo sleep, it's yeah. right into this hellhole. And, you know, basically the idea is that one of the aspects of the anomaly is that it kills all electronics more complicated than a light bulb. So humanity has been reduced. That's what this feels like. It's like trenches and tanks, but on an alien planet. <laughs> um, the enemies you're fighting, these are the insurgents who mm. are your, your the ECAs at war with. Yeah. Uh, of course, they don't call themselves that. They call <laughs> themselves the exiles. And, you know, understanding the whole tragic story behind this war is a big part of the, the mystery that you're solving. Right now we the temporal slice, so first ability. Yeah. You see that you are slowing everyone and later killing them. So that's really cool. You are s you are fast, but you can even slow but down yeah, the enemies, yeah. which makes you even faster. <laughs> that's, that's cool. In <laughs> the bu the bullets going in slow motion inside that bubble, you're like totally Neo. Yeah, totally. yeah, but Neo couldn't slow down the jeeps, so even <laughs> slow motion. Right, yeah. right. I noticed that your health was low. How did you heal though? Yeah. You are receiving some part of the health through your assassination. It's that whole idea of doing damage is what br gives you your health back. Yeah. Here we are healing when you are close to the enemies and we are killing them. So the more enemies around you, the better. And the skill we are seeing is the earthquake. So basically it's like a better shotgun. Okay. So you can synergize it together and kill a lot of enemies in the close, close combat. Oh. It's a golem. Oh, that's you are cool. changing into the almost indestructible guy. Yeah. So you can even be more close and more tanky and more buffed. That's exactly what I need. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I need to be more tanky. Oh, yeah. man, I like it. I like how his skin is like rock solid and yeah. everything. Or yeah. His or her, depending on which way you decide to go in customization. Yeah, this is one of the first large hubs in the game you come yeah. to. You know, basically like after those who are loyal to the ECA have retreated into this rift for protection. This is like one of the first places on mm -hmm. Enoch where a kind of civilization is placed. Yeah. But it's also the first time in the game that you really get to slow down yeah. and start to kind of explore and start to kind of unravel some of the mysteries that are a key part of this game. Yeah, yeah. it feels desolate but hopeful at the very same time. So, so you can receive money for it. So we, our money is called scrap, basically. Oh, okay. And then yeah. if you have bad luck, let's say, in the world finding the cool loot, you can buy it through the vendors. Or maybe you are missing some item that you want. Or maybe there will be some uh, mod you want to purchase. You can do this through scrap. How do I move from one environment and get to the next? Right. So the story is carrying you forward and the right. journey is really important. And every time you kind of move, you open up a whole new area adjacent to your hub. And got yeah. it, got it. Okay, that makes sense. Where are we here? So this is the first city that I mentioned earlier, okay. which is now totally in ruins. Yeah, this I was going to say city. I don't see a city. <laughs> <laughs> it was supposed to be. This was sort of like, like the place that the colonization started. Right. Um, that, that huge thing that we saw of the Ark ship that brought us here. Mm -hmm. And th the whole idea of the colonization plan was that so that would power the city, right. but... Then the anomaly hit, oh, and that anomaly. thing melted down, and it irradiated half the city, and, you know, the, the exiles were trapped out here. So this is, this is now home base of the insurgents that you're moving into. You're moving into their territory now. So all is about the fire and ash. This place is filled with enemies. It's what is that? <laughs> yeah, that thing. <laughs> Those right. things are really fucked up, man. <laughs> you are not fighting only with human. Yeah. Well, those are the creatures that mutated from ah, the peaceful the creatures. Those now those they are not. No, no, that. There is no cute creatures anymore <laughs> here. <laughs> <laughs> because yeah. your threat is even more dangerous. So you have to fight with really, really nasty creatures in your journey. Oh, man. All right, that's going to be fun. Introducing the Outriders Broadcast, a monthly show where you're going to see new areas, new enemies, new guns and gear, and all new features and details on this dirty and desperate sci-fi epic. Good. 
Many threats stand between us and the source of the signal. Those of us who survived exposure to the anomaly moved beyond our physical limits. We've become altered. As pyromancers, we manipulate explosive volcanic energy and devastating walls of flames. As tricksters, we manipulate the fabric of time and space to take our enemies by surprise. And as devastators, we shatter the Earth around us, a brute force powered by the planet itself. And so our journey across Enoch begins. To discover what lies at the heart of the signal. We came to Enoch looking for hope. A fresh start on an untouched planet. Then, we found the signal. So we set out to discover its source. That was our first encounter with the anomaly. When the storm struck, the Outriders were forced back into cryo sleep. While we slept, the anomaly raged, and the creatures of Enoch advanced. Thirty years later, when we finally woke, the world had changed. But, so had we. With our advanced technology rendered useless by the anomaly, a successful colonization wasn't possible. But after all these years, the signal is still out there. And at its source, a chance to find answers. To start again. As we venture across Enoch, we discover a violent new world. While we slept, those that survived the anomaly did what they could to carve out a living, and something resembling society took shape. We scavenge for weapons and armor, and trade what little resources we have in order to give ourselves a fighting chance of survival. We engineer vehicles from scrap, and set out towards the horizon. And as we push farther into the unknown, our powers grow, alongside our knowledge of how to use them. But as we start to understand our power, we discover there are others who have paid a heavier price.
one nightmare into another. Not on our dying Earth, but somewhere much worse. We came to Enoch as our last chance, a chance at a new home. But what we found didn't save humanity, it consumed it. We awoke changed, the anomaly unleashed within us, burning with power, impossible power. robs us of our humanity, yet gives us so much more. Each step taking us further from what we were and closer to what we must become. <laughs>